Hey guys, Ghost Your Dave with another Destiny 2 Shadowkeep weapon review. Today we're looking at our first of the ritual weapons that I chose to go for, and it's the Crucible Ritual Scout Rifle known as Randy's Throwing Knife. Yep, we're just gonna gloss right over the name, makes perfect sense to me, perfectly fair. Randy's Throwing Knife is a rapid fire frame 260 RPM scout rifle, which are the fastest firing type of scout rifles. The only other one we've had since Forsaken is the Black Scorpion 4SR from the Gunsmith, which is one of the scout rifles I used on my journey for this thing. It is a ritual weapon, which means it has a set curated roll of fluted barrel, extended mag, the options of rapid hitter snapshot in the first trait slot, or zen moment or kill clip in the second trait slot. We're rocking with snapshot kill clip, snapshot so we can be the first shot in every gunfight, and kill clip because getting a kill means more damage and nobody's complaining about doing more damage. It comes with a fully masterworked range stat, and I threw on a hipfire grip, and we're rocking it with Luna Faction boots and an empowering rift to fully get that max range scout rifle. So in order to get Randy's throwing knife, you're gonna need to head over to Lord Shax in the tower. Lord Shax has a quest for you called Reconnaissance by Fire that asks you to complete three tasks, and that's it, just the one quest step. The three tasks that it asks for you to do are 450 scout rifle final blows in the crucible. However, multi kills with scout rifles count for a greater progression. It asks for you to get 2100 points in comp, not hit fabled, you just need to total get 2100 points, which means technically you could win loss non-stop, only gaining a total of like 100 points at the end, and still eventually get it as long as overall you've technically acquired 2100 points. And the final thing, which is the hardest and most grindy part, asks for you to get 14,000 medals or kills in the crucible. That sounds terrible, but I picked it up immediately on day one the second the DLC came out, grinded with my team to 5,500 over the course of like seven hours across two days, and by that point I was already at 91% on it, so it goes pretty quickly as long as you're not trying to mindlessly grind it out. If you try and do all of that in one sitting, it's going to feel like a drag. However, if it, you just get it done as you play through Crucible, after you get your scout rifle kills, put back on your favorite loadout, and you just play Crucible casually, it'll get done pretty fast. Then once you complete those three things, you head back to Lord Shax, and as you saw in the beginning, he rewards you with Randy's throwing knife. So before we talk about this weapon's role, why I think they chose it, and if I think they did a good job on it, let's talk about this weapon's base stats. I know having the guaranteed ritual role, the only role that Randy's throwing knife can have, means technically its stats will always look the same no matter whose it is, but let's talk about the base stats of this weapon so we can figure out where it sits default compared to other rapid fires. We only have the one to compare it to, the Black Scorpion in the energy slot, so let's go ahead and do that. Randy's throwing knife has more range, less stability in handling, gently, and the exact same reload speed. I think that's a completely fair trade-off, having more range means you're going to see less damage fall off, which, let's be honest, if you're using a scout rifle, the last thing you're trying to see is damage fall off. Which, spoiler, you're still going to see it every now and then. Rapid fire frames are prone to damage fall off, you will see it, but it's really not that big of a deal seeing as they still have an absolute ton of range. So we're just going to go down the line starting with the slot that this weapon takes up, and that's going to be the kinetic slot. So, number one, we have a ton of very strong energy weapons in this game already. In fact, a lot of people have talked about the fact that most of their favorite weapons are stuck in the energy slot, so making a kinetic weapon just makes sense. Making a kinetic weapon a scout rifle makes sense because we don't see them very often, they haven't seen a lot of love, so if they're going to make something special, why not show some love to scout rifles? As it's been mentioned multiple times already, we only have one rapid fire frame so far that's in the energy slot, so making a rapid fire frame in the kinetic slot, seriously, just makes way too much sense. So with the barrel and magazine options, it's very apparent that they went to round this weapon's stats out. Starting with just the barrel, being a fluted barrel giving a huge bump to handling and stability, it instantly puts it on par for stability and above the black scorpion and handling, so a very good pick there for what they're going for. With the magazine option, they didn't just want to increase the stat, they picked extended mag, and I'm assuming that's because this gun fires so fast. It really catches you off guard. 260 RPM compared to some of the automatic weapons in this game doesn't sound that fast, but trust me, you'll be out of bullets in this magazine even with the extended mag quite consistently, which is nice because that pairs with the fact that rapid fire frames intrinsically have a faster reload when the magazine is empty. 
Let's briefly mention the masterwork now before we get into the actual traits of this weapon and what they do for it. So the masterwork, as seen at the beginning of this video, it's range. It's always range. It's the only one that I would have picked and makes sense. If in the actual gun's perks you're going to try and balance it out, then at the very least you give it a huge bump to range at the end with that masterwork, giving the gun less damage fall off and giving it a gentle bit more bullet magnetism to make the gun feel really good. The first trait slot here absolutely killed it. Both of them have a lot of reason to be ran. Rapid hit allows you to get off those kill clip reloads incredibly quickly and makes the gun bounce less after each consecutive headshot, which makes it easier to control for people, which allows you to absolutely laser and map people, out dual pulse rifles, out dual scout rifles, out dual hand cannons, out dual whatever is in front of you. It's an incredible perk. For Snapshot, the one that we're running, I just wanted to mix it up, and I really enjoyed using Snapshot because it made the handling of this weapon even better. Snapshot just gives you an incredibly fast handling when aiming down sights. It's almost instant and allows you to get off your shots very quickly. So in the second trade slot, we have a clear winner here, and that's going to be Kill Clip. Kill Clip is incredible on this weapon, but just for a second, I want to question why we have Zen Moment here. I have to assume that Zen Moment is here for stability for console players, but if you wanted stability on console, I think you would still just run Rapid Hit with Kill Clip, because then you're not missing out on damage, and you still have stability, and you get reload speed. Maybe on console if you wanted to run Snapshot Zen Moment, but realistically, I don't think that's worth it. It kind of just feels like it was here just in case somebody wanted it, but realistically, you should be running Rapid Hit Kill Clip or Snapshot Kill Clip. So here in the Crucible, Rapid Fire Scout Rifles already have a 0.93 second optimal time to kill, reached by 3 crit and 2 bodies, which is really forgiving, allowing for 2 bodies and a really fast time to kill seeing as it's under 1 second. Consider the fact that Scout Rifles already have so much range, meaning you're easily able to outduel hand cannons, auto rifles, some shorter range pulse rifles, or other Scout Rifles, and it's a really good time to kill. Consider the fact that with Kill Clip proc, it becomes a 0.69 second time to kill with 4 shots, I believe 3 crit, 1 body, and it's really forgiving. In fact, I would say that's pretty competitive. Considering the fact that Kill Clip is very good for chaining kills, because you get a kill, you reload, you get a kill, you reload, and you can constantly do that. Being a scout rifle, so you don't even have to get within their optimal time to kill ranges most of the time, depending on the type of weapon you're using, and that's pretty deadly. Here on PC running Snapshot, this gun still barely felt like it had any kick whatsoever. I barely ever noticed the dot actually moving when I was just holding down the trigger. While using this gun, it feels incredibly satisfying. Every single time it shoots, you can visually see the optics, which might I add, this scope is awesome. You can visually see it kick back, even if your dot is barely moving. It's a little bit trippy, but it adds a very satisfying feeling when using this weapon. Another thing about how good this gun feels is the fact that rapid fires are like the least scout rifle scout rifles. If you want, yeah, you can sit at the back of the map and you can put in really good consistent damage for yourself or for your team and pick up kills, just like any other scout rifle. But what I personally love about rapid fire scout rifles is you can play aggressive with them. You can slide around corners and just put in Hot shots, you can slide, you can dual guns in closer ranges, you can do whatever. You can play aggressive with it, that's what I really enjoy. You can play smart at the back of the map if people are pushing you, or you can be the one doing the pushing, and just because you're using a scout rifle, you're not immediately in a bad position. Having a very fair time to kill that we talked about with or without kill clip, putting in so many bullets with good per bullet damage that each have good flinch because of that, it just allows you to play in a different way compared to most scout rifles. Obviously, not all scout rifles make you play at the very back of the map. Most of them you can play closer, but I just feel like this weapon here has a much larger list of ranges covered than other scouts, even if it's missing that incredibly long range. But because of that, if you wanted to, you could pair it with a sniper. This is Bungie's first line of ritual weapons, so I can't fairly rate it compared to other ritual weapons, especially seeing as this is the only one that I currently have. However, if I'm just going to compare this gun to other weapons, this is a 9 out of 10. Bungie absolutely kills it. If the other ritual weapons or ritual weapons down the line continue to be as good as Randy's throwing knife, then I have to say I'm not that upset that they got rid of pinnacle weapons because honestly, this scout rifle here is incredibly pinnacle. Anyhow, that's going to conclude my thoughts on Randy's throwing knife. If this video helped you or you just enjoyed the gameplay, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends. 
If you want to see more of my content, feel free to follow me on Twitch TV slash Ghost Here Dave's link down below where I get all of this gameplay live and I did the entire grind live as well. I stream rather consistently. You can feel free to follow me on any of my other social medias down below, but most importantly, I highly recommend you go ahead and have yourself a great day. And you get up and you go get yourself Randy's throwing knife because trust me, you won't regret it. Gave them a drubbing. Total destruction.